today on Divorce Court. I'm in divorce court today because I need to see if I should walk down the aisle with this man or run in a different direction. My biggest problem with Imani is she drinks too much and it's causing a lot of problems in our relationship. I will want to leave Marco because he's gave me an STD. I'm trying to move our relationship forward, but she's held back in the past. I want the judge to tell Marco he needs to understand and appreciate my feelings that I still have towards a lot of things. I would like for the judge to tell Imani to stop drinking. Marco, you have made me feel less than a woman. I really need your emotional support. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Imani Petty and Marco Marquez. The two of you are considering getting married after 10 years. You've been engaged for the last year, and you do have one child together. Um, but you're not quite sure what you should do, so you've come before me. I gave you my compatibility test, which we'll talk about momentarily, and then I will give you my best advice on whether or not your union is ill-advised. Ms. Petty, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why we're here today? Um, our main problem is um, we have a couple of infertility issues. Infertility issues? Yeah. When we first met, we were in love, mm -hmm. and then we dated for a while, and I got pregnant. Right. And when I went to my first doctor's appointment, they notified me that I had the um, STD chlamydia, and um, it just damaged my body, and now I'm having a really hard time... Conceiving. Yeah, getting pregnant. Okay. Mr. Marquez, did you give her an STD out the gate? I did. I mean, it was in the beginning of our relationship. I was young. I was immature. Right. You know, I was still running around in the streets. I was just, I was just... He was just out there. Yeah. He was just out there. Yeah. Ms. Pitt, why don't you tell me a little bit about what happened as a function of having this STD? What did the doctors tell you? What actually happened? Um, I was at the doctor's appointment. I was, uh two, three months pregnant, and they basically told me that my daughter can be blind, she can come out deaf, she could be born prematurely, her lungs and kidneys could fail at any time, thanks to the STD, so mm -hmm. it was very scary, and I was very depressed. Had you ever heard of chlamydia before no. you got it? Did no. you know what it was? No, I had no clue. You know, I, and I just have to have an opportunity to say this because that's one of the most common STDs out there. And the rates of chlamydia has skyrocketed over the years. And it's something that everybody needs to be aware of and get tested for. Right. So, and I, I, I've got an expert that's going to talk about it a little bit because I think it's an important teachable moment mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you were sexually active and not aware right. of mm -hmm. what you could have gotten. Right. Um, were you seeing other women while you were seeing her? Is that how that happened? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Like, Did she know you were seeing other women? No. I mean, back then, mm -hmm. I was... I had... I wasn't sleeping with multiple women, but I had multiple women. And she was one of those... Uh, one of those multiple women uh -huh. all the way up until we had our child. Once we had our child, that's when everything stopped on my end, as far as the multiple women and all of that stuff. The fact that you had a baby on the way changed how you perceived what you were doing? Yes. Is he accurate in that? That, that once that baby came along, he committed to you and all those other women yeah. got laid to the side? Sort of, kind of, but it didn't happen as soon as I had her. It was still gradual. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He, he was tapering down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but have you had any trouble with them on that front since then? Um, a couple of years later. What happened? Uh, my friend called me and told me that she's seen him coming out of a girl's house All the again. So it took me back to what we had already been through, and I didn't trust them. Mm -hmm. So it was What hard were you doing to over her house? I, was, I wasn't over no female's house. You just what? It wasn't you? I, it wasn't me. I was on my way to work. Yeah. So when she sent me the text, she asked me in the text message, are you cheating? Just bluntly like right. that. And I responded like, I don't have time for this. You know, I'm on my way to work, to a place that I don't really want to be, but I got to it for my family. Go. Right. You know, I left all of that in the past and I go to work and come home and you're accusing me of doing something all because you heard it from a friend. Right. You know, so 
being as though I shut it down right then and there, you know, I, it wasn't nothing to explain because right. it wasn't, wasn't nothing going on. She took that as a red flag. Right. Okay. Your baby was premature, correct? Mm -hmm. But it didn't have any of those dire difficulties that the, that the doctors mm. talked about, no. correct? Yes. Okay. Did they say that the baby was premature as a function of the chlamydia, or did they not know why? No, it was my fault because I had um, too much protein in my system, and they told me that they would schedule um, for me to deliver. You were eating I, too much protein? Was, no, I was drinking um, sweet, sweet tea. tea. That's like what I was extra, craving. Extra so. sweet. And she I was, was craving. It. She was drinking that drink nonstop. It so much. They said I had too much protein. Protein and sweet tea. That's what they said. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what they said. I got carbohydrates. I got the sugar. They, part. That's exactly <laughs> what they said, though. Huh? That's exactly. I mean, I don't know. I'm not I a doctor. I don't know. Preeclampsia. Huh? Preeclampsia. Pre oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Did yeah. they say that was from the sweet tea? Yeah. So they just said everything was from the sweet tea that I was drinking, and then when I went in there that day, they basically made me deliver that day. Mm -hmm. My sister's a doctor, and I love doctors. <laughs> but sometimes I don't know. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They tell you stuff. They know more than you do. You know, you it's like get a second opinion. But yeah. I mean, you it, it turned out okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, she's sweet so tea. Yeah, Could I be. I don't neither now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um... I want to talk to you about the other pressure in your life at this juncture, which is money, because you don't have enough of it, and what it's doing to your relationship. Why you're so anxious to have more children? I want more children only because when she was pregnant, I wasn't there a lot, mm -hmm. so I missed out on all of that. Hasn't she had a lot of complications as a function of that pregnancy? We fixed all of that. We is had it fixed? say the, the biggest arguments you two always have is always about money. Tell me what's going on. Is somebody not working? Somebody financially irresponsible? It's just basically he's financially irresponsible. Give me some examples of that. Um, for instance, he would rather eat curry out almost every night instead of eating what I cook, which mm -hmm. messes up the money. And then he has his game system that he's addicted to that he has to continuously buy games for. Are you, are you spending money like a kid when you should be responsible? No, I mean, I come home from a long day at work and she's not in the mood to cook, you know? Mm -hmm. she, she, for, for dinner, it would be sandwiches and chips. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I come home from work, I want a hot meal, you know? Are you light with that? So, sometimes. Yeah. Like, if yeah. I'm tired, too, because I work and go to school, too, mm -hmm. then... Some days. You're struggling with money, but you, Mr. Marquez, want to have more children. And you're struggling with her fertility as a function of that. Why don't you tell me why you're so anxious to have more children? And then I'm going to have my expert come up and talk to us about how chlamydia may or may have not have been implicated in the fact that she can't have children. I want more children only because, like I said, in the be when she was pregnant, I wasn't there a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't go to every doctor's appointment, so I missed out on all of that, you know? Ha hasn't she had a lot of complications as a function of that pregnancy? We, we fixed all of that. We Is had... it fixed? They say it's clear now, but we're still not pregnant. I brought an expert here, Dr. Candace White, from Emory Healthcare, and I want to come and talk to you both so you understand what the nature of the complications are from chlamydia and talk to us all about the nature of chlamydia and why it is such an expansive, almost epidemic problem here in the U.S. Dr. White? Thank you so much um, for having me. So just really quickly, sexually transmitted infections, there are new ones that are reported. Literally, there are 20 million new cases by the CDC. And mm. specifically with chlamydia, as you were stating, it is the most common one that is reported U.S. and worldwide. So chlamydia trachomatis is a bacteria. And that bacteria can actually cause complications if it's not treated. Now, if it's treated, then yes, usually patients have no issues or complications. But when it's not, mm -hmm. 
it can actually lead to things such as pelvic inflammatory disease. Now, PID is something where it will literally start to ascend up the reproductive tract, and it can cause scarring, and it can lead to issues where women long-term or either short-term have issues with fertility and getting pregnant. How do you know you have it? Do you have to test for it? Are there signs yes. for it? So in order to diagnose chlamydia, you do usually a pelvic exam um, and you do testing. And some of that testing could be a cervical swab or it could be a urine test. Mm -hmm. That urine test is sent off to the laboratory and it will say, okay, this So men can test chlamydia. if they have it through a urine sample. Yes, it's very specific and sensitive. It's a good test. If nobody gets anything else out of there, like the most common STD is chlamydia and nobody's testing for it. A lot of young folk don't know it out there. Mm -hmm. You have to yes. go to the doctor and deal with it. Yes. That's what I want everybody to hear. Yes. And I thank you so much, Dr. Thank White, you. for telling us that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm going to go back onto the subject of what you want and what you want and what I saw in your compatibility test so we can discuss the viability of a marriage between the two of you. I don't, I don't live in the past. So. What are you saying? You're saying she's stuck in the past? Yes. About what? The, the, the issue of the baby and the STD? You can't get past yeah. that? What would you do if your monogamous partner gave you an STD? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Do you want to have more children? Yes. Is it a deal breaker if she can't? No. You love her? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Till death. Until death. Till Until death. death. I saw some things in compatibility tests. I just want to ask about it. I mean, the thing I want to see is that you're on the same page. You said something I asked. If you could change one thing about your intended spouse, what would it be? And you said, this is deep, the way he thinks. What mm -hmm. don't you like about how he thinks? It's the way he thinks when it comes to certain things, like understanding me. He just doesn't understand my emotions and my feelings and how I'm still affected about, how, about everything that I've been through with him. Did you hear that, Mr. Marquez? I hear it. What did you hear her say? That I basically don't take in her feelings into consideration. Is that accurate? In certain, in certain situations, only because I don't, I don't live in the past. So what do you say? You're saying she's stuck in the past? Yes. About what? The, the, the issue of the baby and the STD? You can't get past yeah. that? It's, it's him holding me accountable for everything that has happened. That's why I can't get past it. It's like... Give me an example. Um, say, for instance, if I was to get pregnant and something goes wrong. Oh, it's my fault because I'm a drinker. Or I didn't get pregnant this month because I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. So he puts it all on D me. Do you do that? I, I did see in your paperwork it's... you think that she's not getting pregnant because she drinks too much. She, she, she drinks, let's say she missed her period. The first day after she misses her period, you know, I want a baby so bad. He put me on the I'm like, rest. okay, basically, you know, no more drinking, no more, you know, I mean, just in case. She doesn't do it, though. She still continues to drink. It could be three days past her period. And... <laughs> <laughs> See? Do you know how many, many children were conceived in drunken honeymoons? I told you. I mean, no, it's, I not, it's not that. It's not you that. You can't blame her for that. No, she I, can't... no, no, no. Judge, I don't, I don't blame her at all. Here's why I'm concerned, okay? Mm -hmm. She just said she doesn't like the way you think. I read the, in the package, you, you, you're always talking about how much she drinks. She says she drinks to block you out. And then she answered a question. She said, how comfortable do you feel asking your attended spouse for what you want sexually? And she said, not too comfortable. I think somebody's not getting hurt over here. I do. If she wants me to do something specifically sexually, she wants me to read her mind. I'm supposed to automatically know what she wants. What do you feel about the communication in this relationship? Uh, I don't get emotional support when it comes to anything, basically. Um, if we get on a baby situation, that's a shutdown because he's going to automatically say, it's my fault, 
this is the reason she you thinks drink. That. Stop. This is the reason you drink and certain things we just can't talk about or touch on because he's going to shut down on me. So it never gets Why wrong. Why do you think she thinks that? Instead of her telling me how she feels, she would rather me automatically supposed to know her needs Certain and things her after wants. 10 years, you should know. But what does he know? A lot. What does like, he miss? If, like, sexually, if, um, to her, sexually, almost everything. That's, if I come into bed and I have on pretty lingerie, why you got that on? That's too much. He don't like me to wear lingerie. I, got, I see what's Things happening like here. I see what's happening here. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> what would you do if you felt your partner wasn't listening to your needs? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. No, not right now. That's the answer to should we get married. And let me tell you why. You can't sign on to a future with somebody if you feel your basic needs aren't getting met. Mm -hmm. And one of the very basic needs a woman has is to feel like she is heard in her own home. Here's what I got from you, Mr. Marquez. I got elevated decibel levels when we started talking about what she thinks. You started to get angry. You got loud. And what I think is happening at your house is that she doesn't feel like when she says something to you that is not in unison with what you feel, think, or believe that she's going to be told she's wrong or that you're going to get loud and get angry. So she gets quiet and she backed up. She's in a little corner all whittled away because you are so subsumed with all of the things that you believe and think. She's a day late on her period. You put her to bed because you want a kid because you missed it. You have got to hear your wife. And when I mean hear your wife, you got to hear what she has to say. You don't have to understand why she's saying it, but you have to hear her. And you can't tell her just because she wants something you don't understand that she's incorrect. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't sign on for it until he gets some counseling and learns how to talk, learns how to hear you, because I don't think you feel heard. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did I mean, you hear what it, I said? I, I hear what you said, but it, it, it also goes off of how she explains what she wants. You know, if she if she comes to me, let's say she's she's drunk, I don't like to be around her when she's drunk. Period. You know, it's already a turn off. I don't. Yeah. I know she's wrong. Everything is her fault. I get that. And no, she gets not, that. No, 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 no. Well, he's she, the reason you can't I accept any insight into this is any you, you can't take any ownership, any anything. I think sometimes she might drink just to because mm -hmm. that's what she said. I need you to hear her. Clear your mind. Unclutter it. Go to marriage counseling. And until he really hears you, don't marry him. You with me? Yes. This matter is adjourned. You kept referring back to her drinking. You do really feel like that's a major problem here? I think it's a major problem because all of the little issues that we have stimulates from her drinking. Was there anything left unsaid today? Oh, no, not really. Everything, we got everything off our chest. And just want to go home and take some time alone for myself. <laughs>